These are exciting times, aren't they? It's hard work keeping everyone happy in my little community, but I try my best. Oh, uh, hi! Uh, hello! <laughs> You're the alien, uh, the, uh, well, uh, the person that came from out there, in space, that we weren't expecting at all. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. Uh, can we start this over? Yeah, yeah! Coming down. Here we go. <sighs> okay. Sorry about that. I'm Abe Levitz. Abe Levitz. I'm the cabin manager here, so if there's anything you need during your stay, I'm happy to accommodate. Please do, even if you just want to schmooze. People didn't know what to think. Here we are, minding our own business, out in deep space, all alone. Then we hear some sort of garbled transmissions on the radio. Real screechy, real inhuman sounding stuff. Then you show up? People had all sorts of fakakta theories. Aliens, time travelers, you name it. We watch a lot of old movies, so... Anyway, it spooked the bejesus out of us, because we were expecting to find nobody. Ah, glad you asked! I coordinate cabin maintenance, plan activities, even help settle domestic disputes. It's a demanding job, but in short, I'm here to keep people happy. I try to keep both the kids and adults entertained. Scavenger hunts, sing-alongs, fun little art projects, you name it. We also have regular media nights where our historian, Julia Yang, screens old movies, plays music, and exposes us to other Earth media. Me? Hey, well, there's not much to say. I take care of people here. I live with my husband, Daisuke, no kids. We passed on having a surrogate so others could have larger families. Instead, I get to spend time with everyone and their families here. They call me their bubby because I'm like the grandmother they never had. I may have had something to do with that nickname. <laughs> oh? Oh, you must mean the Yiddish! It's an old, old, old family tradition. The Levitts have been trying to keep it alive for hundreds of years now. See, we didn't think the language would survive if we didn't, so we charged ourselves with preserving it. 
It's a point of pride for our family, and something I'd like to pass on to others so they don't forget. Like my great-great-great-great-grandmother's latke recipe. <laughs> Till next time, I guess. I'm a doctor and a counselor. I assist my wife Lorelai in performing minor medical duties, but I also practice psychology and help maintain our crew's mental health. I know it must seem strange to you. I am not a captain, nor am I a security guard. But I was brought along for a very specific reason. The captain trusts me to de-escalate situations. Uh, pardon me saying, but we did not know who you were or what your intents were. So, Captain Breckenridge wanted me to come along as a friendly face and keep the conversation amicable. I am glad that you were peaceful and my role was as limited as it was. Thank you. Ah, life on a colony ship has its ups and downs, as you can probably imagine. I tend to look on the bright side of things, however. To the best of our knowledge, we were on a critical mission, saving the human race from extinction. That notion was always with us, and it instilled a sense of pride and duty. Sure, the living quarters could be considered cramped, and we could go nowhere else. But we also had near endless time with friends and loved ones. I suppose as I get on in years, I have learned to appreciate that more than anything. The pleasure was mine.
Just stay out of trouble. These are exciting times, aren't they? Boy, am I glad you weren't some sort of alien or something. Oh, wow, you're new? Weird. Okay, uh, wasn't expecting this. I guess I should introduce myself? I'm Janet. What's up? Uh, you? Oh, well, nice to meet you, I guess. I could take a break to chat if you want. Certainly not what I want to do. I mean, I hate this job, and there's really nothing I can do about it. I'm the Cultivation Manager. Fancy words for Farmer and Fertilizer Collector. I didn't have a choice. Most people don't. You get a job, and that's it. Like, I'm great at what I do, but I would enjoy doing literally anything else. Meanwhile, my sister Julia, she gets to hang out with kids all day and watch movies. The kids I couldn't care less about, but she doesn't even care about Earth culture. Ugh. Oh my god, it's terrible. I don't know how my parents did it, knowing they would never, ever get to leave until they died. Every day, you see exactly the same things. The same people do the same job. It's all the same, all the time. Seriously, the only thing that kept me going was knowing that we were the generation who knew we'd finally get the hell out of here. Although now that we're here, nothing seems to be happening. Sometimes I wonder if my sister was the lucky one. Ah, so you've met her. No, not Julia. Julia and I were actually triplets with our sister Jen, but the ship ran out of one of her medications and she didn't make it. Sucks, but it is what it is. We only have so many supplies, we couldn't exactly get anything new along the way. Anyway, it happened a long time ago. I don't really feel that she's lucky. I'm just frustrated. Eh, bye. There's so much more to learn about. from outer space and here you are welcome welcome i have a million burning questions but i won't overwhelm you there will be plenty of time for that later please indulge me just a couple how did you do it 
Did humanity finally discover faster than light travel and eclipse our poor old ship? Oh, I've heard of this technology, but always believed it was theoretical in nature. Maybe we can talk about it in more detail later. I'm sure you have more pressing matters to handle. I've waited this long. What's a little longer, eh? Oh, I've got so many questions, but I'm being rude. I haven't even given you my name. Chief Engineer Kazemi, but you can call me Amin. And, I might add, I'm one of the reasons we're still floating out here today. Yes, of course. Anything for my new friend. Many years ago, when I was a junior engineer, the reactor's computer burned out. The computer that controls the reactor's various regulators. I'll spare you the details, but when that happens, the ship and everyone on it is in danger of turning into a mess of hot slag. I had to jury-rig parts from old media devices to prevent a meltdown. And that's how I became the boss around here. Some may say I'm a master of keeping things together with nothing but duct tape and bubble gum. Well, if we hadn't gum left. Pretty sure that ran out a hundred years ago. When I'm not dealing with catastrophic engine failures, I manage the other engineers. We maintain all the machinery, computers, you name it. We keep the life support on, and the ship flying. Ah, great question. I do not know for sure, but I can venture a guess. All of the reading I've done on the matter suggests that at the time, there was uncertainty that the technology would ever work, or if it did, that it would work at the scale we needed. So, I trust they made the decision to strike out when they did, fully believing it was the only way. Yes? Yes! So many! Does everyone have their own spaceships like you? Do people only live on naturally habitable planets, or did they learn to terraform? Are we in contact with alien species? I have so many more, but I don't want to take up all your time. Haha! <laughs> I knew it! Incredible! Amazing! Simply amazing! In our ancestors' time, only the very wealthy could afford to build ships. Even this ship was only possible by our families pulling together nearly all of their financial resources. Hmm. I'm not surprised. The amount of energy it would take to terraform an entire planet seems improbable. I can assume these types of colonies are strictly for mining and gathering rare resources since there are nearly limitless habitable planets to choose from out there. Mm. Disappointing, but not unexpected. When you showed up, I tried to tell the others about the Fermi Paradox. I suggested that the most likely explanation for you was that humanity had developed faster, more advanced technology and had leapfrogged us. Seems I was right. Ah, thank you for taking the time to talk with me. I can have a bit of a big personality, I'm told. So let me know if I ever get on your nerves. Ah, uh, careful not to touch anything on your way out.
that we know what's out there, things are going to be more interesting from here on out. Just stay out of trouble. Never seen a ship like yours before. But then again, I haven't seen any ships before you arrived. got some of the best private security in the settled systems. Between you and me, that ship is the most exciting thing that's happened here in eight. Good luck handling this situation. Glad I'm not in your shoes. <laughs> Neither. We're our own private force. The Paradiso Group pays top dollar for top-notch security. And I dare say we're some of the best in the business. We have to be out here on the fringes of the settled systems. Honestly, it's not as exciting as you might think most of the time. More often than not, we're just handling drunk and disorderly conduct. Heck, even pirates leave us alone for the most part. I think it's because some of them actually vacation here. As long as they're not bothering anyone, we've been told not to worry about them. Stay out of trouble. out there, isn't it? It's my pleasure to make sure our guests are happy. Oh, can't wait to get out of here. Oh, you're going to make me do...
No. Ugh. You people always think that just because we're some fringe planet and not part of the free stars or whatever, that we're happy to haggle for everything. <laughs> I wouldn't even care, honestly. But they take it out of my pay if any money's missing, so no. No discount. Have fun out there. I wish I had booked a stay for longer. 